Welcome back to my channel for a super exciting Leica episode. And the reason why I have an empty table in front of me in contrast to the normal situations you see here in the studio is because I want to start from the very beginning. And the very beginning has a start here and that's 2015. In 2015, Leica introduced the Leica Q. And this is already a later version. It's the Safari edition of the Leica Q. And I did shoot a lot with that camera back then. And it was the first full frame compact camera, fixed mounted prime lens on the camera body. And it was a game changer in Leica photography. Four years later, going from 2015 into 2019, the Leica Q2 came to market. And the Leica Q2 again was a game changer. Much more improved features, specifications, much higher resolution of the sensor. But having said that, there are still a lot of Leica Q shooters around us who actually didn't bother about a higher resolution or improved features. Like always in the Leica world, a little bit later we see other versions of the same camera coming to market. And one we got for the Leica Q2 here is the Leica Q2 monochrome and also this camera is the camera I used a lot and did shoot with it because it's so super interesting and gives that very special Leica look in black and white. And also other special, also limited editions of the Leica Q2 came to market like here for instance the James Bond 007 special limited edition which I love a lot. You have seen this camera several times on my channel. I shoot it, it's not resting on a shelf, it's really in my camera bag. And the Leica Q2 is up to date, very likely the best compact full frame camera in the world. The evolution from the Leica Q or Q1 to the Leica Q2 was a significant step forward and it happened after four years. Remember what I said, 2015 market launch, 2019 market launch. Today everything changes again because we are four years later in history. 2019 plus four more years is 2023 and here we go. This is the new Leica Q3. Today when I'm filming this we are at the beginning of May and it will be another four weeks before this camera is announced and when you see this video the announcement will be out. And uh, I want to thank my friends from Leica Switzerland, in particular from the Leica store in Zurich, that they gave this camera to me, freshly sealed already weeks before market launch and the announcement to have a look at it, shoot it, get familiar with it. And uh, what I want to do in this video is I will unbox very quickly in a time lapse this camera. Then I will start to explain the camera. We'll look into all the differences compared to the Leica Q2. I will also take this camera out in the field and shoot it intensely, providing sample images of course. And I want to let you everything know that you might want to know about this new full frame compact camera from Leica, the new Leica Q3. Let's kick off the video. Alright, that was very likely the quickest unboxing I ever did with a Leica camera. So on the table in front of me, I have here the Leica Q2 with a hand grip mounted and I have here the new Leica Q3. Let's quickly recapitulate what's all in the box. First of all, we have the usual battery charger. That's the same charger as for the Leica Q2 and the Leica SL2 and Leica SL2S. And uh, we also have the cables. This is the cable for the European market here. And this is the cable if you're on travel or living in the US for the US market. So that's all included in the box. We also find in the box the Leica Photos cable, which we already know from the Leica M11 and the Leica M11 monochrome. And that's a USB-C to lightning accessory cable, which can be used to connect the camera with its USB-C port. I come to ports in a moment with the Leica Photos app, for instance, on your iPhone. Quite nice that this one here is in the box. Of course, there's also a battery in the box and I have the battery already in the Leica Q3. The battery release mechanism is the same as what we have on the SL2, SL2S and the Q2. We have that lever here, I pull it, then the battery comes out but cannot accidentally drop off. I give it another gentle push and then the battery is here. And at first sight, this looks exactly the same as the SL batteries and the Q2 batteries. But if you look at them from a capacity perspective, 
let's put them on top of each other. We have here the old one, here the new one. We have a significant difference in capacity. Here we have 1860 milliampere hours. And here on the new one, we have 2200 milliampere hours. So here we have significantly more capacity. And the natural question you will ask now is, can I use this extended or enhanced capacity battery also in the SL2, SL2S and in the Q2? And the answer to that is yes. Let's quickly show how this works. So here's my SL2S reporter. Let's pull the lever, let's get the battery out. Let's have a quick check. So here we see this is 1860 milliampere hours. Let's take the new Q3 battery. This is 2200 milliampere hours. Let's get this battery inside the SL2S and let's switch it on. And here we go. First LED is flashing. Here's the menu. The camera works with the new Q3 battery. So that means from now on, you can have an extended battery life by using Q3 batteries in the Leica SL2, the SL2S, and by the way, also in the Leica Q2. Let's quickly check that just for the sake of completeness. So let's mount the hand grip off. Let's get the battery out. Let's have a look. 1860 milliampere hours, 2200 milliampere hours. Let's insert this into the Q2. Let's switch it on. And you see LED is flashing. The camera can be fully operated with that new battery. So also the Leica Q2 can from now on have extended battery life with this new battery, which was constructed for the new Leica Q3. Let's get the new battery here, which belongs to the Q3 in the camera body again. And here we go. So this is back so we can operate the camera in a moment. And the last accessory, which is in the box is that ring here. And that ring looks a bit mysterious but its application is quite simple. If you look at the camera body here, let's get the lens cap off, let's get the lens hood off. If you don't wanna shoot the camera with a lens hood, which makes the lens a bit shorter, of course, then you can use this ring here and can mount it here so that this is closed and sealed. And then the camera looks like this without a lens hood. And clearly you save about a couple of centimeters here in terms of the length of the lens tube and some people appreciate that. I don't use it. I use it always with lens hood. So I remove this again. This ring comes back into the box and let's quickly mount here the lens hood again. And then the camera is complete in my opinion. In the next chapter of this video, I wanna compare the camera bodies. And the first remark I wanna make is that the dimensions of the Leica Q3 camera body are exactly the same as the ones on the Leica Q2. And guess what? I can prove it. So let's remove the hand grip here. And uh, I will show you now that the hand grip for the Leica Q2 and Q2 monochrome exactly matches the Leica Q3 camera body, which is quite convenient, of course, because that means you can continue to use your old hand grip. I come to one caveat in a moment. You see here, there is absolutely no problem. It fits perfectly to the camera body, if you look here, and it gives the camera a very safe grip which is something I wanna have all the time on my Leica rangefinders as well as on the Leica Q cameras. So that is already quite nice. But there's one reason why you might not wanna go for the hand grip of the Leica Q2. And in order to understand that reason, let me unmount this again and let's have a look at the bottom of the two cameras. Let's start with the Leica Q2. And you see here, there is the SD card compartment, there's the battery compartment, the lever, the tripod mount, that's all good, but on the new Leica Q3, we have here next to the SD card compartment, some electronic contacts. And that means there will be a new hand grip available, not the old one, although it's perfectly matching. You can use it until you get the new hand grip if you purchase the Leica Q3. And via that new hand grip and these three electronic contacts here, you can charge the camera in a wireless charging technology way. And that is quite convenient, so you place it on a wireless charger in the same way as you might do with your iPhone or your Apple Watch. And then the camera gets charged without any cables and without taking out the battery. What I do not know at this point in time, because we are still significantly before market launch, is whether the new hand grip also has some spare outs maybe for the battery or for the SD card compartment. We'll see when it hits the market for the time being. The only additional information I have is that wireless charging technology is implemented in the Q3 and you unlock it by purchasing the new hand grip and mounting it so that these three contacts can transport the charge 
into the camera body and then into the battery. Let's quickly look at the rear side of the cameras. On the left hand side I have the Q2, on the right hand side is the Q3 and on the new Leica Q3 we have an improved high resolution OLED electronic viewfinder with 5.76 megapixel and the frequency is in a way that you have no delays, no blurriness if you have fast moving subjects, you get more details and you get super high image quality if you have your eye on the EVF instead of working with the LCD. There are also changes which have been applied to the control buttons on the rear side of the camera. First of all, the four directional control button on the Leica Q3 is significantly larger than it used to be on the Leica Q2 and that can be helpful if you want to move your focus field with the eye on the EVF for instance instead of working with the LCD screen and using the touch functionality. On the Leica Q2 we have on the left hand side the play button, the customizable function button and the menu button. On the Leica Q3 the play button sits on top of the four directional control button and the menu button sits below and the customizable FN button is gone. But instead of one customizable button on the upper side of the camera on the Leica Q2, we have now two of them on the upper side of the Leica Q3 and I will show them later how they work and how you can customize them. The diopter control is still where it used to sit on the Leica Q2, it's the same position on the Leica Q3 and you have to push it then it comes out and then you can adjust your diopter correction. On the top side of the camera there is no change. So here on the hot shoe we have Leica Q2 engraved, here we have Leica Q3 engraved but that's not a change. We have the shutter speed dial on both cameras sitting in exactly the same position. We also have the shutter release button here. One difference is that here on the Q2 we cannot use a remote shutter release cable where here we have the same mechanism as what you are used to from like a rangefinder cameras and then we have here a control wheel this is the same in the same position on both cameras and we have another customizable function button here on top of that which I'm also going to show later in the video. In terms of the fixed mounted lens on the Q2 and the Q3 Leica stays with the Leica Sumilux widest open f1.7 28 mm it's an aspherical lens fantastic image quality comes from that lens if you shoot it on the Q2 or Q3 sensor and here we have absolutely no change. But there is one difference related to the lens I want to at least point out and first of all if you look at the lens hood for the Q2 and the lens hood for the Q3 they are exactly the same. There is no difference it's the same design same dimensions but on the lens cap that is different. This is the lens cap for the Q2 and this is the lens cap here for the Q3 and you see in the depth dimension this one here for the Q3 is longer. Have a look here and that is super helpful because over all those years I found it annoying that when I had my Q2 and also the Leica Q camera in my backpack that the lens cap went off too easily. That will no longer happen on the Leica Q3 and I'm going to demonstrate this now in a little experiment. So here's an important disclaimer. I'm going to show you a little experiment but you should not repeat that at home, okay? I don't want your camera accidentally to drop down on the floor. Let me do it here for you, watch it and enjoy the show. So if we look at the two lens caps here, you see the larger dimension on this one here on the Q3 compared to the Q2. And that leads to a situation where the lens cap is much more firm on the lens and uh, will not accidentally drop off the lens tube. Whereas here, and I'm going to show this to you now, if I let the camera go and hold it only by the lens cap, it will fall down. Have a look here. You saw that? I cannot lift it up on the lens cap. If it is firmly mounted, no chance. It will always come off. Here go again. Look at that. Now let's try to do the same with the Leica Q3. And immediately here you see I can lift this up here without any problems. It's so firm on the lens, this lens cap will not accidentally drop off as I had it so many times in my camera bag with the Leica Q2 and the Leica Q. You also see this how easily I can rotate this here when it sits on the lens hood whereas here it is super firm. And uh, I would not encourage you to hold your camera in this way but very likely it's safe. On this one here it will drop down immediately. Have a look, one more. <laughs> you saw that? So. Don't do it at home, I just did the experiment for you, I hope you enjoyed the show, experiment is over. 
Now here's a little tip when it comes to the new lens cap of the Leica Q3. On the Q2, I took off the lens cap by just pulling it out. Very simple, because it's not sitting firmly and also has here some spare out. You see that here on the lens hood, it's so easy to just pull it off. And as I said, it very often accidentally came off the lens in my camera bag. Just pulling it off on the Q3, and that's one of the first things I noticed when I started to work with the camera, is not so easy because you need significant force. So you should rotate it, but not in this direction, because then you unscrew the lens hood. Do it in this direction here, and then it's easy to take the lens cap off. For the sake of completeness, let's look back at the lens. And first of all, there is this little button here, and that locks in the focus ring. Now the focus ring is locked, and you are in autofocus mode. If you wanna go into manual focus, you just push that little button here, and rotate the lens and now you can manually focus and that is quite convenient. Exactly the same mechanism is available on the Sumilux on the Leica Q3. You have that button here and now currently the focus ring is locked and you are in autofocus mode. If you push the button and rotate it then you are in manual focus mode simple like that. The macro functionality on both the Leica Q2 and Q3 on the Sumilux lens is the same. There is this ring here where it says macro and if you turn it, then you get into macro mode and can go for close-up shots. And you see also here how the distance scale is changing. Have a look, if I turn the ring, you get a different scale here for near distance focusing. And that's exactly the same on the Leica Q3. We can turn this ring here, the scale changes, have a look, and we have a different distance scale for close-up shots and we get nice macro images from that. But there is one significant difference on the Q3 which is to be seen in the context of macro shooting, but also in other shooting situations. And whereas here on the Leica Q2, the display is mounted into the camera body, you cannot twist it, you have on the Leica Q3, the option to vertically tilt it out. And that is something new, and I think is super convenient for macro shootings. Have a look here. This is now in a way that you can put the camera on the floor and look from the top to the LCD display, and get your shooting right. And it can also go in this direction here. It's only a vertical tilt, but it is something we have not had on the Leica Q2. And I personally find this a very important, most useful feature. By the way, the specifications of this tiltable LCD screen here are the following. It's a three inch TFT display, so not OLED, but I personally find it crisp and sharp and absolutely fine when it comes to colors and the resolution of that screen is 1.84 million pixel. What I wanna do now as a first series of sample images from the Leica Q3, I wanna show you some macro shots and wanna also show you how I did shoot our cat with the LCD vertically tilted to get on eye height with the animal and that gives a much better perspective than if I would have shot these from the top because then the images would look crabby and if you use the LCD in that way, go to the height of the eyes of the cat, it looks much nicer and you will see this in a second in the sample images. Just for the sake of completeness, I wanna also mention that the camera body and the lens are IP52 certified. That means the camera body and the lens in the way I have it here in my hands are resistant to splash water and dust. And you can shoot this camera even in rain or under nasty weather conditions. Now, one of the most fascinating features I find on the Leica Q3 are ports. And if you look at the Leica Q2 here, let's also for the sake of completeness here, unmount the hand grip, there are no ports on this camera. There is absolutely nothing, not even a USB port or USB-C port, no ports at all. Whereas on the Leica Q3 now, finally, we get two ports and these are the most essential ones in my opinion. And the two ports of the Leica Q3 are hidden behind that door here. 
If I open it, we find two ports here. The upper one is an HDMI port and the lower one is a USB-C port. And I charged the camera exclusively through that UBS-C port because I found it tedious to take off the hand grip of the Leica Q2 all the time. And it works like a charm and also the charging time is very acceptable. Now the HDMI port is something which turns this camera and I come to video features later in the video into a beast for video shooters because it means you can finally mount an external monitor for either monitoring purposes or external recording purposes on the Leica Q3 which makes this device here super professional for video shooters. I want to quickly show now how this works if you use the HDMI port here behind that door on the Leica Q3 to mount an external monitor. So let's get the protection of the hot shoe off and let's mount the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. Let me just screw this on here. Here we go. Then we have an HDMI port on the Ninja 5. So let's plug this in. Let's open the door. And let me quickly check the direction for the HDMI plug into the camera. Here we go. So now this is connected and uh, let me switch on the monitor here or recorder and let's see what happens. You see it's booting up and then it finds actually the signal from the camera. And now let's play with this for a moment. So currently I'm focusing on the lens here. That's the new Leica Sumilux M 50mm f1.4 with the improved near distance focusing. It's in silver chrome and if I half press the shutter button it focuses on that lens. I can also tap somewhere on the screen. So now the camera is focusing on the background and you see here on the monitor the live view which is very small on the LCD and very big on the monitor updates accordingly. Let me tap on the lens again and then the focus turns back to the lens. So I have here an option to monitor in a much larger representation what's going on with the camera and that is of course very useful for manual focusing. But of course the Thomas Ninja 5 Plus is not only a monitor, it's also an external video recording device. And by that connection here from the Leica Q3 into the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus, I can record externally to the recorder and the SSD which is mounted on the backside of the Atomos here and in this way have a very professional video shooting setup. If I switch on the Leica Q3, which I'm going to do right now, we have essentially the same menu structure as what we had on the Leica Q2. And we will also find some elements from the Leica M11 and M11 monochrome. So on the Leica Q2, if you swiped here, you came into video mode, that's the same here, but you can also customize a button for that, which came to the Leica Q2, by the way, in a recent firmware update, just some weeks before the Leica Q3 was announced. And if I swipe again, I'm back into still image mode, which is quite convenient, of course. If I push the menu button, I get into the status screen. I can tweak parameters here in the way we are used to. So whatever I want, you see, I can do this exactly in the same way as on the Leica Q2. And it is a very familiar setup to me. One of the most essential features of a camera is the sensor plus the CPU or processing engine. And on the new Leica Q3, we have a new 60.3 megapixel backside illuminated, so BSI acronym sensor and we have a new processing engine, which Leica calls the Maestro 4. And the Maestro 4 we have not seen so far in Leica cameras. So let me try to recapitulate what I know. The Leica Q2 has the Maestro 2. The Leica Q3 has the Maestro 4. The Leica M11 has a Maestro 3, whereas the Leica M10 has a Maestro 2. And in the Leica SL2 and SL2S, we also have the Maestro 3. So this is the first camera with the new generation of Leica processors or CPUs and that of course boosts performance. We also have on the Leica Q3 in the same way as we have it on the Leica M11, the triple resolution technology implemented. So if I go here into the menu and we go here to let's say DNG resolution, then we can choose here between 60 megapixel, 36 megapixel and 18 megapixel. And there is some pixel binning going on in the internal processing of the images, which should improve dynamic range at lower resolutions as well as noise behavior if you shoot in a low light environment. The full list of improvements that we have in the Leica Q3 compared to former Leica cameras, but in particular in a direct comparison side by side with the Leica Q2 are the following. 
Here we have the well-known 47.3 megapixel, whereas on the new Leica Q3, we have a 60 megapixel resolution with that new backside illuminated sensor, whereas the sensor on the Q2 is not backside illuminated. On both cameras, we have 14 to 15 stops of dynamic range, depending on resolution. But I'm going to show a clip in a moment where you see what you can do with the new Leica Q3 when it comes to dynamic range. We have here a Maestro 2 processor and here a Maestro 4 processor, which should boost performance. We have a digital zoom simulation on the Leica Q2. Let me quickly go there. And the digital zoom only concerns JPEG images. So what I can do here, if it is customized in that way, I push the zoom lock button and then in the JPEG, I get a simulation of a 35 millimeter lens. If I push that zoom lock button again, it simulates a 50 millimeter focal length lens. And if I push it again, it simulates a 75 millimeter lens that has been enhanced on the Leica Q3. So here I'm shooting in the full frame, 28 millimeter, but I push that zoom lock button. It simulates again, a 35 millimeter frame on the JPEG, then a 50 millimeter lens, then a 75 millimeter crop. But then we have one more enhancement and that's now the simulation of a 90 millimeter crop for a 90 millimeter focal length. And in the same way as we know it from Leica perspective control, the Leica Q3 writes the information about the applied digital crop into the metadata of the RAW file. And I have here five RAW files. If I start with the first one, that's a field of view of the full frame 28 millimeter. Then we have 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 75 millimeter and 90 millimeter. And if on the 90 millimeter, as an example, I go into the develop section, I see here the crop which has been applied. And that is unique because typically on other camera brands, if you apply a digital crop to an image, it affects the JPEG only. Here, the full RAW file is preserved. You see it here, it's the full frame. It also says here in Lightroom 60.3 megapixel as resolution, which is the full information on the RAW file. But the digital crop is nevertheless automatically applied also on the RAW file. And I see this indicated here by that frame. And that is something really cool and I think is solved by Leica in an ingenious way because you don't have to apply the digital crop again if you want to work with the RAW file instead of the JPEG. What's interesting on the new Leica Q3 is that the digital crop or simulation of different focal length lenses, which works in still image mode, also works like a charm in video mode. So let me swipe here to go to video mode and now I can zoom again here and get a digital crop. And the interesting observation I made is, so this is the 90 millimeter focal length simulation. And the interesting observation I made when I shoot video in that, some internal upscaling is taking place, although this is a digital crop. And I'm going to show quickly a video clip. We come to video resolutions later, but that was recorded in cinematic 8K and then cropped to a focal length simulation of 90 millimeters. So have a look at that clip. I think that clip looked quite well, given that this is kind of a digital crop here. So there seems to be some internal upscaling to still the cinematic 8K video resolution going on, despite the fact that I cropped in significantly. And by the way, you see that crop kicking in only if you push the release button here. Let me try and show this. Now it jumps to the 90 millimeter simulation of a lens. And uh, the resolution here is very high. And also the video clip you just saw is super sharp. So there is something amazing going on in that camera, which I do not yet fully understand, but will explore in the next weeks, of course, when I shoot with my own Leica Q3. And when I had to give this one back, I will use my own one and go deeper into this topic. What else do we have on the Leica Q3 we had not on the Leica Q2? So first of all, in continuous shooting mode, the burst speed here on 10 frames per second on the Q2 improved to 15 frames per second. And also the ISO range improved from a maximum of 50,000 and the base ISO of 50 to still the same base ISO of 50, but now a maximum ISO of 100,000. And then one significant improvement is the autofocus system because on the Leica Q2, we had contrast detection only. And now finally on the Leica Q3, we get both contrast detection autofocus and face detection autofocus face in this case spelled with a ph and not with an f 
but you can also get the face spelled with an F if you go to the menu and we go here into the autofocus changes, we go to eye face body detection and then you see it jumps immediately to Jennifer's face and if continuous autofocus is activated, it also stays very sticky on Jennifer's face and the eyes are also recognized. And in the same way as I showed in my video on the Leica Q2 and the firmware update, you can also toggle between the eyes here in the same way as I demonstrated in that video back then. So that is quite nice. And in my experience from the last days, face detection autofocus with a pH again, that is something that improves in combination with the contrast autofocus, the autofocus speed by about, let's say five to six times. So this is quite significant. And I think now this camera becomes mature because contrast autofocus only is something which is outdated and most professional cameras today provide a combination of contrast detection autofocus and face detection autofocus, which we finally have implemented now here in this tiny little compact full frame camera. I already demonstrated what an HDMI port can do for you if you have it on a camera like the Leica Q3, which is not available on the Leica Q2. And in terms of video capabilities, we have massively more functionality now on the Leica Q3. So let's go here into video mode for a second on the Leica Q2. Let's toggle, let's go into the menu. Let's go here to page number three. And then we have the video settings. Video format, for instance, you have here on MOV, you have cinematic 4K, 4K and full HD. And uh, the same applies on MP4. We have cinematic 4K, 4K, full HD and full HD slow motion. And that has changed significantly on the new Leica Q3. So let me swipe into video mode. Let's go into the menu. And if we go here on page number two, we have video format and resolution. And if I go now into MOV, we get much more optionality here. So we have cinematic 8K, we have full 8K, we have cinematic 4K, 4K, we have full HD in ProRes, which is absolutely fantastic and so on. So there are much more things you can do here in the same way on MP4. If you look at that here, we have here 8K, full 8K, 4K and full HD. And that is something which I want to quickly demonstrate. So let me show an 8K clip because if you post-process an 8K clip in Premiere Pro, you can, if you export later in 4K, which is the industry standard, easily crop in by 200%. And what I want to do in that clip, have a close look. You will see this at one of the main places in Zurich, Paradeplatz, it's at the Trump station. The Trump will come in, there is a couple I'm going to focus on, and then I will follow by a keyframe technology in Premiere Pro that couple as if I would follow them with the camera, but de facto my camera was mounted on a tripod and I didn't move the camera at all. So let's have a look at this clip and you see how powerful 8K video is shot on the Leica Q3. All right, I hope you like that little demonstration of what you can do even if your camera is sturdy mounted on a tripod and you don't move it. If you go for an 8K resolution and then in post-processing in Premiere Pro, make it look like there would be a dynamic movement of the camera. There is more to come here. So let's go into the video settings again on the Q2. So let me switch here into video mode and let's go here into the video settings. So we have here video settings and then we have microphone gain, wind noise reduction and video stabilization. That has also been super nicely enhanced in the Leica Q3. So let me go into video mode again by swiping and then we go here into video settings. And now we have here much more to choose. Microphone gain is there, wind noise reduction is there, but now we have finally video gamma. And video gamma is something we know from professional video devices, but in particular it's implemented on the SL2 and the SL2S. And if I go into that, I can now shoot in L-Log for instance, and then in the settings under L-Log, if I go into that here, I can go here and have corrections for my video profile. And I can also turn the LUT profile, so LUT stands for lookup tables, video shooters do know what I'm talking about. You can also choose here natural, classic and custom LUTs, which you can load into the camera. And if people are interested in that, 
I'm happy to provide a fully fledged video shooting tutorial on the Leica Q3 and uh, to let people know how this is all working. But it's actually quite natural how you can choose here different profiles and uh, you have here your custom LUTs lookup tables which you can use and you can distinguish them whether they should color grade what you see in the EVF and LCD or on your HDMI output which is for instance what will then appear on an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus in the way I demonstrated it before. So this is very, very powerful. So let's look at a little clip where I did shoot in L-Log Gamma and you see here how flat the profile is now on uh, my Yennefer here and the background. And I show a little clip how this looks like if you shoot a video in L-Log and then color grade it later on with a custom lookup table or with one of the lookup tables. You can, by the way, also download from the Leica SL2S website from Leica originally because they fit in the same way for the Leica Q3. I will later show sample images from many, many shots I took with that Leica Q3 camera already. But there is one topic which is of particular interest with a new sensor in a camera like this and that's dynamic range. And it's easy to underexpose images here by four to five stops and fully recover them later in post-processing in Lightroom for instance or Capture One and get everything back, all the information, all the details in the shadows and in particular also the correct coloring. So let's have a little clip I compiled so I can demonstrate this to you. I just showed a clip about dynamic range. So here you have all the reserves. And what I wanna do now is I wanna show sample images when I took this camera for a day with me to the beautiful city of Luzerne. And let's start with a video clip. Everything in that clip has been recorded with the Leica Q3. And then let me show you sample images. And then I still have a few topics which I need to mention to keep the presentation complete.
There would be so many more features I would love to cover, but I need to watch the timeline of this video. So here's another one I at least want to mention. We have interval shooting on the Leica Q3 for time lapses in the same way as we have it on the Leica Q2. But now we can do this with 60 megapixel resolution instead of on the Q2 with 47 megapixel resolution. And that makes a big difference. So I was shooting here 900 frames. I will show the time lapse clip in a moment. And if you compile that to a time lapse clip, these 900 frames by the use of Lightroom and then Premiere Pro, you end up at almost a 10K video resolution. And that means again, like I said before on 8K video, if my target resolution for the export is 4K, I have at least 200% to crop in into the time lapse clip and that generates nice dynamic movements in the video. So let's have a look at the clip and then we continue here with another feature I want to mention. There are two more topics I want to quickly cover and the first concerns perspective control. When very recently the new firmware of the Leica Q2 was rolled out, perspective control was still not included besides many other great features which Leica implemented for the Leica Q2, very close actually to the rollout of the new Leica Q3, which is remarkable in my opinion. And uh, perspective control is now implemented in the Leica Q3 out of the box. If you go into the menu, and you go to page number three, you find your perspective control off. And if I switch it on, I get the correction, which is read by Lightroom and uh, written in the metadata by the camera. And you have perspective control in the same way as you're used to it from other Leica cameras. You can also switch it off, of course. And uh, the second topic I wanna mention is customization of function buttons. I mentioned earlier in the video, we have three of them here. Here is one, here is the second one, and there is one at the top. And if you wanna customize this, let's say we wanna have perspective control, not by accessing the menu on page three, but directly by the push of a button, I can press and hold, for instance, this button here. And then I can choose here from many, many options, for instance, perspective control. And if I choose that, then I don't have to go into the menu and find it on page three. I can just push the button here and then perspective control is on in the way I just showed. And if I push the button again, perspective control is off. And that's simple like that. And as I said, there are many, many options you can choose for these three customizable buttons. And in this way, for your own workflow, best possible, customize your camera. Okay, so I wanna wrap up the video now. There are a few more things which are worthwhile to mention. First of all, with the market launch of the Leica Q3, we also get a new version of the Leica Photos app in version 4.0 and that will significantly enhance speed, transfer rates and stability of the connection. You can also see this here in the menu. If I go here into the menu and go to photos and then on connectivity, I can choose here performance mode and that will boost up significantly your connection and your transfer rates when it comes to data or images and what have you. And that is something we are looking forward to of course, because that enables very fluent remote shooting. With the new Leica PhotoSap 4.0, Leica will also provide five new Leica looks and think about them like filters, which are calibrated by Leica to create a unique Leica type look for your JPEG images. And you can already see this if you go into the menu here, this is already prepared here in the menu. So if I go here to the JPEG settings, you see here not only the film styles, which you know from former Leica cameras, but also Leica looks. And you need to use the new Leica Photos app to download these looks and apply them for your JPEG images. Of course, the raw files will stay untouched. This is it. This is all I wanted to say and show. And I hope you liked my introductory video to the new Leica Q3. So if you care about a fully fledged tutorial how to operate this camera, because there is so much here to discover and to explain, please drop me a comment and let me know if there is enough interest I'm happy to do as one of the first a fully fledged tutorial and hands on on this new Leica Q3 camera. And if you think about the two cameras now, the Q2 
is a camera which I loved over many years. It's a fantastic camera. But if you look at the evolution, and as I mentioned before, on the evolution from the Leica Q to the Leica Q2 at the beginning of this video, the evolution now from the Leica Q2 to the Leica Q3 is as significant. We have so many more features and so many more capabilities. And if you loved your Leica Q2, you will love the Leica Q3 even more. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there is always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.